we will move to integrator now. Okay, so integrator, uh, remember the circuit, before we talk about the integrator, uh, try to remember the inverting operational amplifier in your mind. Uh, so here, this is the circuit of inverting operational amplifier. We had seen even just before. So we have input resistor and it's uh, given to this, of course, we are applying this input signal. This input signal is given to this negative in, uh, input terminal. And of course, we are taking fraction of output. It's coming through this feedback resistor to the same negative input terminal. So here we are going to replace this RF feedback resistor with the capacitor. Then this circuit it's called integrator. So first you should understand the circuit design. So in the circuit design, uh, you, we cannot change. This is the circuit design, the standard design of integrator. So how can you remember this? Just remember this inverting operational amplifier. You are just replacing, replacing one component with the capacitor, in the feedback loop then the circuit becomes integrator. So now we will see how this integrator circuit is working. Okay, again, we are going to apply the same rules, same law, KCL, Kirchhoff's current law. So we know here uh, we are grounding this positive input terminal. So the voltage potential at this terminal is equal to zero. And here it means virtual short or virtual ground, so Vx is also zero. So we know this very well now, We uh, I think we repeated many times. So now, according to this KCL, uh, first of all, you should uh, also remember this. So once we start the power supply to this operational amplifier, current start to flow. So this input current I in is flowing through this input resistor R to this negative input terminal. Similarly, the feedback current IC is flowing through this feedback capacitor. Okay, so according to Kirchhoff's law, I in is equal to IC. So this is the I in is equal to IC. So now we have to find IC. IC means what? That is the current across the capacitor. If I say VC, VC means that is the voltage across the capacitor. So now we have to find the IC. Uh, first of all, uh, you should remember the theory behind the capacitor, how the capacitor is working. Maybe you already know about that, or if you don't know, just I uh, explain shortly now. Capacitor is just uh, some kind of electrolyte plates. It's, it's, it's storing the charges. So when you apply the current, it will store the electrical charges so many electrical charges according to the capacity of this capacitor. If I have one microfarad, so then it will store the charge accordingly. So the uh, charge is stored into this capacitor. It's called Q. Q is equal to C times VC. What is the C? C is the capacitor value. Whatever the, this is up according to the manufacturer. So we have so many different types of uh, capacitor values we are using in the lab or of course in the practical industry as well. So a uh, few, uh, few microfarads, few nanofarads, so it are picofarad. So there are so many different units, different values. So capacitor value is the C and then based on this capacitor value, it will store the charges uh, based on the input current. So this, this is called VC. VC means that is the voltage across the capacitor. So the current is flowing through, then the voltage drop occurs in this uh, capacitor that is called voltage uh, across the capacitor. So here you can see here, this is VC. So this is the formula for Q. This is the charge. This is the standard formula. So now I want to, uh, convert this charge into current. So for example, uh, this capacitor will start to charge once the current start to flow. So once it, it's full, it's full with charges, 
you know if you have one bag it can hold maybe 1 kg of something after it becomes full then what will happen it cannot take any more so once it start to uh, once it became full then it will start to discharge the charges so now i uh, for example even though if you cut the supply no more current here then it, the capacitor will start to discharge the charges in terms of current in this circuit that is how we are using the capacitor uh, in this kind of circuit designs that is the use of the capacitor so if you make uh, so now i want to know this current value so the ic is flowing because it's already stored the charges now the charges are converted into current and then flowing into this circuit so mathematically what can we do so if you make the differentiation of this q with respect to time it means what you differentiation means what so that is dq divided by with respect to time t is indicating time so for example within 5 seconds how many charges are stored into this capacitor just for example so that is why we are just uh, di 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 doing the differentiation of this charge so dq by dt is equal to c times c is a constant value we cannot do anything with this c times we are again differentiating this voltage across the capacitor dvc divided by dt so now dq by dt is nothing but rate of change of charge with respect to time so that is called current ic that is the current flowing through this capacitor so we can so remember this is the basic formula you, uh, you know how it works so now you have to do the differentiation of this one so then you get this formula dq by dt is equal to c times dvc by dt so now i just write this dq by dt as ic i can write like that because i already converted this charge with respect to time and i am doing differentiation so the it becomes current so whatever it is happening here physically we are just writing with the mathematical equation okay so now why i am talking about this capacitor because now we need to find the current across the capacitor so we have already found the current ac across the capacitor ic is equal to c times dvc by dt vc is the voltage drop across this capacitor so now i am going to uh, use this formula again ic i know already so ic i just going to apply in this equation for example this equation is called one equation one uh, so now i need to know v i in value that is the current flowing through this input resistor again this is the same uh, same logic voltage or the potential difference in this branch divided by the resistor value based on the ohm's law so v in minus vx divided by r that is the i in v in minus vx divided by r is equal to c times dvc by dt so now i am going to apply uh, this vx of course is zero and this here dvc again the dvc i need to find out right so what is dvc that is the uh, vc is the voltage across the capacitor again i apply the ohm's law and then the potential difference divided by uh, here we have the already the differentiating with respect to time so vc is equal to vx minus v out so we know v out uh, this is the potential difference so i am just replacing here uh, this one as a vx minus v out vx value we know that as a zero so i put zero minus v out divided by dt so i am just replacing this vc with this one and we know here already so vx is zero again of course uh, so v in divided by r the same equation i am just rewriting here so vx i am just taking out and this zero we am taking out so v in divided by r is equal to minus c the minus i am just taking outside and the constant and then d v out d v out divided by dt so but i am after the output voltage 
So I can rewrite this equation. Maybe this is the equation number two. I am rewriting this equation again. So dv out divided by dt is equal to minus c. So I am just bringing this uh, c down here. So minus one divided uh, divided by rc times v in of t. So I, if you just uh, rewrite this equation, it will become like this. So this is the output voltage with respect to time and we are differentiating. So minus one divided by RC times V in of T. So this is the equation number. We already have two equations, right? So this is, we can call this as an equation number three. So now I just want only V out. I do not want to have these differentiations. So I need to do the integral again to bring this out as a just V out as a round value. So V out of T is equal to minus one divided by RC integral V in of T DT. So this is the final equation. This is the final output of this integrator. So whatever the input voltage you apply here with respect to time, so you will get the integral, integral of this input at the output. And this integral value, you can change by changing this R and C value. That is what indicating here, one divided by RC. This is called a time constant, uh, one divided by RC. So what is happening here? You can see here, V out is equal to minus one divided by RC times this uh, integral part. So RC is inversely proportional to this V out. So we can uh, also, this is just for our analysis. You can uh, do this analysis by yourself. One, uh, this is inversely proportional to one divided by RC. It means if you increase the R value, output value will decrease. If you increase the C value, output value will decrease. Or uh, if you reduce this R value, what will happen? The opposite operation. So the V out value will increase. That is called inversely proportional. Instead, if we, for example, instead of having this kind of formula, if I have V out is equal to minus RC times something, let's say, then this is called a directly proportional. So here V out is, uh, v out is directly proportional to RC. It means, if I increase the R value, V out will also increase. If I increase C value, V out will also increase. If this increase, this will also increase. The upper arrow mark. If I decrease this one, these values, then the V out will also decrease. But here it's not the case. This is the example one, but here is inversely proportional. It means if I increase this R value, then the output value will decrease the opposite. Okay, this is just for analysis, just for your uh, mathematical uh, analysis. In the practically, if you construct this circuit in the lab, you can really do this. Uh, you can change the capacitor value, you can change this uh, resistor value, and you can observe the waveform at the output. Now, we assume the capacitor initial, before you start the power supply to this uh, op amp, there is no charge inside. But in some cases, in practical circuits, before you give the power supply, even before you give the power supply, there will be some charges in the capacitor. That is called initial charges. So the initial charge, if we have initial charge, of course, then we the final output voltage is all, we have to also add this initial charge. So that is indicated by V zero minus. So, but in this case, we assume there is no initial charge. So we can just remove this term. We can only have this equation. So remember, uh, I think we are going to start the Laplace transform very soon uh, after we complete the filters and oscillators. So there you will see uh, how can we analyze the circuit in the time domain and in the S domain. Um, in that case, we will consider some examples, problems we will solve. Uh, capacitor, uh, we should consider with 
uh, it has no initial charge and the second case we will assume there is a charge in the initial charge in the capacitor then the calculations and the equations and the mathematical everything will be different uh, so it's practically you can easily assume right so if there is no charge then whatever the output it's just only depending on the current input but before you start the current input if there is already some charges initial charges you have to add that at the output so it logically it's correct actually that is uh, that is what we are applying in the equations mathematically so conclusion uh, what is the conclusion of uh, this circuit design integrator using this circuit you can integrate the input voltage so now you may wonder what is this integration how it will look like integration in practical circuit or the practical output you will see that now uh, if we apply one volt dc signal you will get the output as below so for example this is the one volt this is the reference zero volt the x-axis and this is the y so we have one volt and this is the circuit design you know that integrated we just have the capacitor in the feedback instead of resistor so at the output we are getting because we are applying to this negative input so output definitely it's going to be minus 180 degree phase shift so output is going down like this this is called integral this slope and then it will not just go forever like this it will stop at one point and then it will get saturated it's based on the plus v set this is the integration so whatever the input voltage you are giving v in at the output we get integral of this input voltage that is uh, so mathematically we represent like this but practically it will look like this but in, in instead of applying to this negative terminal we just exchange this and this now i just uh, ground this one and i apply this input to this positive input terminal then what will happen so now the graph will be just opposite this will be in the positive pan uh, positive plane so just like it will go like this and then it will go to saturation so initially v out will increase in negative direction yes that's correct it, it will increase in negative direction after certain point v out will get saturated whatever you apply the input it will not get more slope anymore uh, this certain saturation point is determined by the value of R and C. If we call this is an integration portion or integration part. So if you want to increase this one or if you want to decrease this uh, length of this slope, you have to change the value of this R and C. That is what we had seen just before a few minutes. I said this is called a time constant. So by changing this R and C value, you can change the value of this output. So now let's see uh, some practical example uh, just for uh, your information. If you apply sinusoidal input signal to this integrator here at the output, for example, this is sine omega t, at the output you are getting cos omega t. But this is also sinusoidal, but there is a phase shift instead if you apply square wave at the input here at the output you will get triangular wave this is the integral part so, sorry this is the integral part so this is just like uh, this is the standard if you apply this kind of input this is what you are going to get at the output and amplitude of the output signals are depending upon the values of r and c why? Because this is the operational amplifier. It will always amplify the input signal at the output. So if, if you apply the small square wave, you will get the triangular wave, but it's amplified in the magnitude or amplitude. Okay, so this is all about integrator. <laughs>